Yeah, there's so many, many stories. I mean, and I know we'll probably bounce around a bit. I wanted to, uh, one thing I, I'm really curious about, and I'm hoping you can explain more, is what exactly is the difference between a, 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 a marker and a talker, and why is why do people confuse that or comment? Okay. Uh, Barker is, is an incorrect name. Uh, I don't really know where it originated or why. Uh, a Barker is a dog. But there are two classifications uh, for shows, and there is the talker, uh, is the man who makes the ballet platform, gives the little free show, and is the pitchman, and tells the people about the show and gets them to come in. That's a talker. And then there is a grinder, who is the man who is in front of, uh, of a, what we call a single-o show, or a grind show, such as a snake show, a fat person show. They don't bally. They don't bring people out and give the little free act. They just grind all day long. And they talk now today, uh, there's not many grinders because we have tape recorders that do the work. But uh, uh, I still make openings. I'm st still a talker. And the difference between a talker and a grinder is about $1,000 a week. And when people commonly say that, you know, they, they say that it's, a, uh, I guess it's just become colloquial, or, or, yes. but it's in, in, inaccurate. It's inaccurate, but it, they uh, barker. Will you be doing that at the fair? I certainly will. You'll be there tomorrow? Okay. Yes. What, could you give us a sample right now? All right. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, if you'll all gather right over here, we're going to have a little free show for you. We're going to bring out some of the entertainers from the big side show and have them present a little free entertainment out here. So please gather right down and close where you can see, where you can hear. First of all, I would like to introduce the little man here to you. His name is Puba. He's the hottest man in town, and he's going to eat fire for you. Light him right up, Puba. He lights the torches, and in just a moment, he's going to eat the fire. You know, ladies and gentlemen, Puba is only one of over 20 attractions here at the World of Wonders, the world's largest fairground show, where you see the strange, the odd, and the unusual. Please take a look at all the pictures from way down there to way down there. These are the artist's conception of the anthropomorphic freaks that you will find displayed on the inside. And that includes, from ancient China, the Chinese giant girl, Mei Ling, stands over eight feet tall. And from three millennia, Egypt is the Egyptian woman who has two heads. And you're going to see all the rest of them, each and every one, are here on display. And then today on our stage, you're going to see real live people doing strange things. You'll be entertained by Molotov, the man who swallows swords, sabers, and bayonets. You're going to be entertained by Matthew Bouvois, a man who stands a beautiful lady in front of a wooden wall, throws knives all about and around her, pinning her so close to that wall, she can't even move until the knives are taken away. And then he'll repeat the initial performance while he is blindfolded. Today you're going to be entertained by Cha-Cha, the girl that has iron feet dancing the ballet up and down a ladder of sharp swords in her bare feet and dancing in a box of sharp broken glass without any injury. You're going to be entertained by Electricia, the woman who sits in a real electric chair lighting torches from her fingers, a light globe from her nose, without causing her any harm or ill effect. Here today, you're going to be entertained by Mephisto, the king of the fire eaters, the man who eats and breathes fire and flame. Why, he could bend red-hot bars of steel over his tongue. He could bite the ends from red-hot horseshoes. He drinks burning gasoline like you and I would drink iced tea. You're going to be entertained here today by the human blockhead, Freddy is going to take a 20-penny spike nail and drive it into the center of his head with a hammer, believe it or not. And today, you're going to see as the star of our show, the biggest, fattest, funniest man alive in the world, Harold Huge. He weighs 712 pounds. Why, he is so big, so fat, it measures 109 inches, that's over nine feet, around his waist. He is so big, 
How big is he? Why, he's so big, he was born on March 1st, 2nd, 3rd, and 4th. He is so big, so fat, it takes four girls just to hug him. Takes a boxcar to lug him, and when he dances, I think you'll agree, he must be full of jelly. Jam doesn't shake that way. We're ready to start the big show right now. Ladies and gentlemen, when you enter, you're going to see them all immediately. There is no waiting. You can stay as long as you like or see it as fast as you wish. There's only one small thing about the World of Wonders, and that's the price to see it. And that is only $2 for adults, $1 for children under 12, and the little kids five and under are invited free. Now watch Pooba, there he goes, down the hatch without a scratch. That was the chocolate flavored uh, fire, and now he'll have the lemon flavored, and it's good to the last bite. He's going in now to start the show, so get your tickets, hurry right in. That is what we call a sideshow opening. We're done. That was great. <laughs> now, how many? nine years old and I will show them a piece of rope, have them examine it, and I tell them uh, I would like to turn this rope into a snake and I want you to help me now. I want you to remember, of course, that this is only a trick and everybody knows you can't really turn a rope into a snake. So don't worry about it uh, and because uh, it will not happen. But here's what I want you to do. I'm going to take the snake and I'm going to roll it up into a little coil, the same way the snake coils up when it's getting ready to strike and bite at someone. And I'll put it here on the floor. Now watch it very carefully and oop! Oh, you have to jump. It's not going to turn into a snake. I told you, it's just a piece of rope. I want to roll it up one more time. And this time, it's a little cool out here today. Maybe the snake won't come out of the rope because it's too cool. Uh, would you please take it and stick it down in your shirt? That's fine. Uh, I'll tell you what you do. Take one hand and hold it over where the rope is in your shirt. That way it gets warm on both sides. Now, I want you to remember that it's not a snake, it is only a piece of rope. And we know, because you're an intelligent young man, it cannot turn into a snake. But just hold your hand on it. And if you start to feel it wiggling around, moving around, just don't pay it any attention because it's only a rope. Now, if it feels to you like it has turned into a snake, you know it's not a snake, so just pay it no mind, just, just let it alone, just hold your hand on it. If it starts to bite you, just remember, it's not a snake, so we'll get, let's all right, we'll let it bite you. And before we uh, take the snake out of your shirt, excuse me, the rope out of your shirt, I want to introduce some of the people, tell you a little bit about the show. So you just hold on to it and get it nice and warm. And so you start into the opening and you tell them this or that, you know, something. And every once in a while you come back to the young man and you say, uh, can you feel the rope? In, is it wiggling around yet? No, okay. And then you go on. And so each time, and you also watch your tip. And you watch not the people in front of you, but the people in the back. Because if they start to drift away, you have to do something, what we call freeze them, hold them there. So if they start to drift away, then you, you come back to the young man. It, does it feel like it's turned into a snakehead? Is it biting you? Okay, well, just hold on to it now for another minute. And so you keep doing whatever to hold the people there until you have told them your story and hopefully got their interest to go in to see the show. And then at the very end, you say, now, I told you that it wouldn't turn into a snake. You did believe me, didn't you? Okay, would you please take it out of your, your shirt? You see, it's still just a piece of rope. I told you it wouldn't turn into a snake. But you go on in and see the show. And, and uh, uh, of course, sometimes you'll get a kid that is very uh, gullible, if I may say that word, and, uh, and they will, uh, will start getting scared, and, and I've even had some that will reach in and throw the rope out and jump off the stage and run, you know. <laughs> so, Can you just, I guess, uh, the, as, describe a tip again, just, but just without? The, the tip, what we call the tip, is the crowd. And so when you make a bally, uh, you are drawing the tip, and you get the tip together. And then the bally is, of course, telling about the show 
and having somebody do something. You start by, uh, you start a trick. If you have a sword swallower out there, you're going to have him swallow the sword. Look how long the sword is. It goes clear down to the pit of his stomach, and he'll swallow it clear to the, to the handle uh, before he does that. Now, you stop, and you don't do the trick. You hold that, and you hold the tip, and then the last thing you do, you have the man eat the fire, or you have the man swallow the sword or something, and then you invite them in. And the ballet is... And that's called turning the tip. So I, I guess the... Uh, uh, but, and so you're, you, as a talker, uh, you're doing a ballet? Is the ballet a, like a noun, or is that an adjective? To, I mean, how, it is a, a derivative of an Arabic word. Uh, among the first big shows presented on uh, a midway in the United States was at the 1890 uh, to 93, 93, 94, Columbian World Exposition in Chicago. It was the first World's Fair held in this country. And uh, they had shows such as The Streets of Cairo, Beautiful Baghdad, and these shows were operated and staffed with the uh, Arabic show people. And the word would, the, to call the people out to the ballet was balehula, and it's an Arabic expression. The translation, I don't know what it means. Then it became shortened down to balihu, which is any kind of, uh, of, of exciting advertising, it's a balihu. And then on the sideshow, it finally just the talker would turn around and say ballet, and that means come out on the stage. How many times would you estimate you've done a? You've, you've How many ballets I've made in my lifetime? This is my 60th year around sideshows, and it would be in the thousands. You haven't missed a beat. I mean, you still. Oh. I, it, it, it was a process of learning, you know, and, uh, and I still learn new things all the time. And 